church was looking for a liturgical dance director, and I applied for it and uh, was interviewed and ended up getting hired. Mm -hmm. um, and um, then I'm kind of wondering, well, what does this mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't, because uh, I didn't really know. I did some research. I did what spoke to me. And because some of what I saw really didn't speak to me. I think I liked um, the fact that the liturgical dance that was going on in the church was not just kind of like, oh, we're going to wave our hands around and glorify God kind of thing. I've seen some liturgical dances where you're, um, you're basically kind of looking pretty. And it's a chance to wear a long white robe and, and kind of um, do something. I don't know. It, it doesn't have a lot of content for me. I was one of the choreographers I worked with at the university. Someone came up to him and said, well, show me what, what would be some movements suitable to be performed in a church. Um, <laughs> and he did a few movements just to, I believe, answer the question, but he talked about that later and he just said, well, I would do those movements anywhere. Kind of challenging the question about what's sacred and what's not sacred. It was interesting when we talked about recycling, reusing, juxtaposing one dance that describes one topic, juxtaposing the dance to another place, to another topic. I was doing a dance and I um, based the movements on the letters of the alphabet. So there was a movement for A. There was a movement for B. What was A? Um, a was, um, this was A. Oh. Okay. And so it's somewhat A-framed, shaped like A. Mm -hmm. And then, actually it's been a while, but B was somewhat like this. The two. The two round places. Round. And then C was a turn. Oh. And then D was a uh, circle Rondichon. of the Rondichon with the foot tracing a D on the form, on oh, the nice. floor. And then E and oh, sure. F. And then a, the G was coming around like G. And then this was H. And then this was I. And then this was coming around for J. And then K. Oh, I use that. The whole yes. alphabet? The whole alphabet A. The first time I used it, it was used in Christmas for a Christmas oh. setting in church. There, the whole effect, the way I used the, uh, the source material, the alphabet, was a little more softer. It was more like snow falling. And then later, I recycled the same movement, all those um, uh, letters of the alphabet. Um, the, um, each gesture for a letter. And I um, used it uh, for a Ash Wednesday service, which uh, was a, uh, it was in a large church. It was so a lot of people, big church, and so it essentially had to be something that read large, and so I, I chose some music that uh, was very uh, dramatic. Here it was more the severity, the beginning of Lent, the time of, you know, giving up, uh, denying. Here uh, at University of United Methodist Church, it was a little bit, it was very, very open. Uh, more open than about any other church I would have been in. The nice thing about University Church is that it has embraced a lot of the arts. 
I just ask you, like, will you really take anybody? And you said that you would, so I decided to test you to see if you really meant it. So that's how I got involved, and I just loved, I just loved liturgical dance. <laughs> no dance experience, and uh, the reason I started uh, associating with, uh, with Paul and the, with the dance group is because my son, uh, Robert, who was a dancer uh, and an army sergeant, died in 2002, and uh, he was a, a great dancer, and uh, two or three years after he died uh, and I met Paul, I thought, you know, even though I'm 55 years old, uh, knowing Paul and the way he could work with people at all levels uh, and, and have them actually do liturgical dance uh, uh, gave me, a, the, I guess, the courage to uh, get involved. And actually I learned that I could do some things that I never would have thought I could do. You know? But when I heard about the liturgical dance, I thought, I thought, I gotta try this. This would be something different. So I think I started dancing about the time that I got to University Church. And how many dances I did? I'm not sure how many dances I did, but I remember Jung just said, you're getting fat, you need to move. So I thought, I really thought I was gonna hate it, but it turned out to be pretty good. This was an exceptional opportunity for me to just dive right in and the critics weren't going to be trashing you in the isthmus later or whatever. You could just totally absorb what was going on, totally become enmeshed in the movement and whatever it was that you wanted to, us, for us to explore at the time and not have to have this little voice in the back of your head saying, oh my gosh, I hope that so-and-so at the Isthmus or so-and-so at the Cap Times or whatever likes it, you know? You just had to go in there and just be yourself. Yeah. It was like I was always, always, always in the driver's seat. And for me to come here, it was just like a breath of fresh air because you just fed me so much. And it was an enriching experience. And I could just relax and just be a part of it unfolding instead of being the one at the helm all the time. So. Um, so the pressures weren't there. I could just totally enjoy it. I went with my dad. It was the first time being there. And I remember like you guys over by the altar practicing for a dance. And I sort of just started to go along with it as well with you and my dad. And then I think we started doing shows for the people in the church. How old were you then? Ten. I liked the getting to move around, um, the different types of uh, dances we did. I loved doing the Christmas dance. I loved the Christmas one. The Christmas one was fun. I loved it when we were carrying the boxes to the tree, and, and that one was fun. That was fun to do. I loved being an eagle one time in one of our dances. It was a lot of variety. Um, we had a lot of fun, a lot of good friendship. It just was kind of the beginning of a new era for me. Coming to dance as an adult for me, um, and um, I, it was a good match for me to to be here and to uh, pro to mostly not be working with professional dancers or, or people who were headed in that direction. So that was a good fit for me um, to relate to people who hadn't danced before. It was a, it was a great uh, experience for me to do something I had never dreamed I would even try. <laughs> and, uh, and I enjoyed it. But a lot of that is Paul. Uh, who really knew how to work with people wherever they were at and, uh, and allow them to express things that uh, uh, within their capability physically. Trying something brand new because of my son. We weren't all doing the same thing, which I really enjoyed diversity there. Thanks to the University of United Methodist Church and Pastor Jinja, my American Indian heritage was appreciated and affirmed. I thought everyone, you know, brought their own, you know, talents to the group.
Ryan Sedano had his own challenges, you know, with hearing and yeah, right. um, yeah. and yet he, uh, you know, he incorporated sign language into some of his movements. I remember I um, would use sign language. He actually was good at remembering movements and unconscious um, trust in himself mm -hmm. to to dance and move. It was like, I love a uh, bird. I love, I remember flapping the wings, going in a circle, and on, I remember clapping my hands down like, you know, like the birds beak. And that was fun to do, that was fun to do. I thought that incorporating sign language was, um, you know, gave it a, an, an added touch. Yeah, and he actually has, has I think been the one person who has been with it to the, the end. To, yeah. yeah, to the end. Not always in each yeah. dance, yeah. but from the beginning, all the way. All the way through. Yeah. I had never really been a fan of liturgical dance until I saw Paul's choreography, where it, there was no hint of performance. It was all pure message and powerfully conveyed uh, every time and so after seeing like eight or ten of the dances that he had choreographed and every one of them was a real worship experience for me. What would you describe as what was authentic for you? Well I remember the dance and the way she described it was standing around the altar looking like angels. <laughs> <laughs> communicate a message to people without being terribly literal or hitting them over the head with that, something that also could be thought-provoking. But I think one of the pieces that was probably the most, I would say the most, I would say the most hard-hitting or heartfelt was when we were doing the one that was commemorating the people and all that, who died during the Holocaust. And I felt that that was a very emotional, a powerful um, moment, is being actually doing that piece. Um, I remember the parts where we, uh, toward the end, we were supposed to be taken away as prisoners and um, when we, we left our possessions, our bags and coats behind. What did you think about handling that subject in the church? I would say it's a challenging, it's a challenging um, you know, topic to deal with because there's still a lot of pain out there. A church that ignores issues of social justice is not really ministering to the world. A church needs to speak out on issues of social justice and with a prophetic voice. I tried to um, not edit myself. I mean, I think there's always some self-editing about what's appropriate mm -hmm. in a church. So I think that was a really wonderful and appropriate use of dance in the church. The dance about the, the Native Americans, I was, I was like the person... It was about wounded knee, I wounded think. Wounded knee, and I was shooting the, the Indians and the buffalo, or was I, I was just shooting the buffalo, right? I think but you actually I, shot some I think I shot uh, Richard Native and, Americans. And, yes. Yeah. We were driving home from church. after that happened. My daughter was like, maybe she was four, and she was like, Dad, why do you do that? <laughs> and so, was, um... It, what did you answer? Well, I said, you know, this is a performance. That's the way a performance works, is that people see kind of events that happen and re react to them. And, and the, if I present myself as, as really bad, then people will kind of uh, take something away from that performance. And that was... We're in these... Dance is a relative newcomer. In comparison to other art forms of the church, 
and I'm wondering how you feel about where dance might be headed. We're in these bodies. Uh, we got them and um, we probably feel better if we use them and, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, actually reside happily in them. <laughs> experience. Why should it just be sitting in a pew yeah. or why should it just be limited yeah, so to uh, uh, music? The Lord said, make a joyful noise unto me. He didn't say, do it in two. <laughs> and you worship as you are, you dance as you are, you sing as you are. So that part of, of, uh, of liturgical dance is so refreshing and so nice because you're really working with real people, not people who've been refined and honed and trained and until they're just an automaton up there, but they're real people and they come with a true passion for what they're doing. I think we were lucky in, in this church also that it, it did kind of create a community of the people, the people in the congregation who did join in the dance, and it was just another way of supporting each other and getting to know each other better. Um, I'd always wanted to be in liturgical dance, always wanted to be, and um, was afraid to to come forward. And dance is about enjoyment of your body. Finding your own body. I mean, it was just perfect for me because uh -huh. um, I'm not good with following certain steps, you know. <laughs> Most important thing is I just have to really relax. The way that I dance, I just trust myself. Each time we rehearse, it wasn't the same, you know, but that idea was there. Improvisation needs a lot of discipline. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to have a fitting moment in that moment, mm -hmm. in that setting kind of bring all your skills, you know, to that moment. And... One thing I had to do a lot is, um, I have to keep telling myself, no rush. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, no rush. And wait, even the starting moment, I just had to wait. It's the waiting for true me or God, you know, to go. It's just not, I have to go, it's like, it's all going. It was a good learning experience.